Now, before we go ahead and go over the overview of the Excel 2013 program, well, first we need to open it up. And you can either do it by clicking on the Start button, which, by the way, what you're looking at here is the Windows 7 operating system. You may have Windows 8 or an earlier version of Windows, but the concept is the same. If you want to go ahead and open up the Excel 2013 program, at least for me on the operating system, you click on the Start button, go to All Programs, scroll to and find Microsoft Office 2013, the folder, expand it with a single click, and then go ahead and find your program. And then when you find it, click on it, it opens it up. Now once you close out of it, then you have to repeat the process. But if you don't want to go back to the Start menu, then go ahead and give it a right click on the program and either pin it to the taskbar. As you can see, it says unpin because right now I currently have it pinned. So the only other option is to unpin it. Or you can pin it to the Start menu or you can send it to come over here and up to the desktop as a shortcut, which is what you see on the desktop there, the shortcut that will require a double click to open it up. So I didn't pin it to the Start menu, but I can do that, and then go ahead and click back. And you can see it's in the Start menu, but that defeats the purpose for me because I don't want to go to the Start menu. So I can right-click on it and unpin it from the Start menu, click off, and I can either use a shortcut down below on the taskbar, which just requires a single click, or the one right here, which requires a double click on the desktop, that is. Go ahead and double-click on it, and there we go. It opens up the Excel program. Now, in 2013, it doesn't open up and start you off with a blank worksheet. It takes you to the backstage view where you get a bunch of templates you can choose from. Like, let's see, I don't want the blank workbook. Maybe there's something else I want to start off with. Which for me, I'm a bit more traditional. And plus, I usually start off with a blank workbook. So I can go ahead and change the options here. And I'll show you later on how you can have it always start up with the blank workbook every time you open up the Excel program. In any case, let's just go ahead and click on the blank workbook to open it up, and there you go. There's Excel 2013. Now for the overview. And to go ahead and do that, so every time you open up Excel, you know what you're looking at here. We'll start in the upper left-hand corner, work our way from left to right, then top to bottom. So on the upper left, you can see the uh, Programs icon to let you know what program you're working in. That's Excel with the uh, X there. Then to the right of that, you have what's known as the Quick Access Toolbar. Is called that because you can quickly access any command on it in a single click, like save. And I'll show you how you can customize that and add more commands to it later on. And then over in the middle here, you have what's known as the title bar. It's got the title of the workbook. It's a generic title. That is, until you save it and rename it and call it something like uh, My Spiffy Workbook. And then over to the right of the dash here, you have, again, the name of the program to let you know that you're working in Excel here. Then over to the far right, you have the uh, help feature. And then new to Excel 2013, the ribbon display options, which we'll go over later when we learn how to customize the ribbon. And that's it down below this ribbon right here. Then you have the three options when it comes to working in a Windows environment, like Windows Vista, XP, 7, or 8. You can go ahead and minimize the window, restore it down, or even close out of it. And then also new to Excel 2013, you have the sign in option. And you can see in the pop-up, this allows you to get your documents from anywhere by signing into Office. Below that, you have what's called the ribbon. It's got all the commands here, and Microsoft categorized them by the more popular commands or the basic commands on the Home tab. And then those commands you want to insert, like inserting a table, charts, uh, spark lines, regarding the page layout, adding formulas, data review, and so on. Let's go back to the Home tab, and the commands within the tabs are grouped. So you can see over here, you've got the clipboard group, a line, then you've got the font group, meaning that all the commands that are dealing with fonts like how to go ahead and choose the type of font, the font size, make the font bold, italics, underline, change the color, is within the font group. Now some of these groups have a little arrow in the uh, lower right-hand corner. It's the expandable dialog box button, meaning that there's more to the group than meets the eye. In other words, these are the more popular commands, but if you want a little bit more that aren't as common, go ahead and click on that expandable dialog box button, and it expands, opens up another window, and in that window, it basically contains the same commands that you see here within the group, but additional commands as well. So we see bold, italics. Well, there's bold and italics. And then you can see down here you got additional uh, commands. You can go ahead and do a strike through. And when you check the box, you can see over here in the preview window what it's going to do to the data in the cell. It's going to put a line through it. So if you've got a discount and you want to slash the price for one cell that has like 50 bucks in it, and then in the cell down below, the new price, maybe 40 bucks. Well, the strike through, you can use that to go ahead and cross out the higher price. In any case, there's extra commands there. Let's go ahead and click cancel. 
Aside from the basic tabs here on the ribbon, you may also get additional contextual tabs or tabs that relate to what you're working on down below. So for example, if you're working on a picture, objects or charts, when you select that picture or object, you'll have some additional tabs like designing the picture or formatting it. You can click on that tab and then when you click off the picture, the tabs will disappear. So those tabs come and go depending upon what you're working on down below in the Excel workbook. But these other tabs here are going to remain. And then over to the far left, you have the file tab. When you click on it, the entire worksheet disappears. It takes you to what is known as the backstage. In other words, when it comes to customizing the Excel environment, you can come down here and click on options and choose a bunch of options here from general options, formulas, proofing, saving, where you want the Excel workbook to be saved every time you click save. Do you want it into a folder on your desktop or maybe actually on your desktop? Let me go ahead and click cancel. The other options you get when you click on the file tab to go backstage is that you get information about the workbook you're working on. You can create a new workbook, open up other workbooks, save it, print it, and so on. So we can go ahead and click back to go to the front stage when we want to work on our data here within the Excel spreadsheet. So that's the ribbon. Then down below that, you've got what's called the name box. It contains the name of the cell that you currently have selected. You can see down below in the spreadsheet, you've got all these columns here and you have all these rows. So when you go ahead and click inside a column, you select the column here, but also you chose a row. So the name of that cell, if you look up in the name box, is column E, row 4, so the cell is E4. And then over to the right of that, you have what's called the formula bar, and it performs a lot of options here, the least of which is that if you look at a cell, and you've got data in the cell, and you have data in that cell, and you don't want to expand the cell, but there's still more within the cell than what you can see here because, you know, it's pretty small. You can go ahead and select the cell and view the rest of the contents in the cell in the formula bar. And the formula bar also allows you to insert functions here into the cell. And we'll learn about functions a little bit later on. Then down below, you have your spreadsheet. And by default in Excel 2013, which is new, I mean, probably not that big of a deal, but in previous versions of Excel, every time you open up the workbook, it had three worksheets, and that makes a lot of sense. When you have a book, you have a lot of sheets of paper. Well, this is still a book, even though it's just one sheet, and that's the default for opening up an Excel workbook. You get one sheet to work with, but you can always click on the plus sign to add additional sheets, and I'll show you how you can customize this so anytime you open up a new workbook, if you want to go back to the earlier versions of Excel where you always had three sheets, or even so, you can have five sheets, ten sheets, every time you create a new workbook, it's up to you. I'll show you how you can do that later on. And within the spreadsheet, you can use it one of two ways. Use it as a database, you know, to go ahead and type in maybe the first name, the last name, and then down below type in everybody's first name, type in everybody's last name, and be able to sort it, organize it. Or you can do calculations. Each cell will actually perform a calculation, a function, or a formula, which we'll cover. Then below the uh, worksheet here, You've got some arrows that if you have additional worksheets, you can scroll over or you can just see them here and click on Worksheet 2, Worksheet 3 if you, like I said, have additional worksheets. You also have the scroll bars here where you can scroll right or left and, of course, up and down. And then below that, you have what's known as the status bar. Over to the left-hand side, it says it's ready. If there's any other issues, it will let you know there. You can also right-click on the status bar and you can customize it. By default, you can see a lot of the things are checked here. And if you don't want to see it in the status bar as you're working with your data, you don't want to see the, like, let's say, average of a bunch of cells you have selected that contains numbers down below in the status bar, then uncheck it. Or we'll go ahead and leave it as is. So you can customize the status bar. Let's go ahead and click off of it. Then over to the far right here, you have the normal view, the page layout view, and the page break preview, which, by the way, we're talking about views. You can come up here and click on the View tab, and there they are, Normal, Page Break, and Page Layout. It's just that these are the more popular views, and you know if you're on the Home tab, and you don't want to come up here and click on this tab, and then click on the uh, Page Break Preview, that's two clicks. Just come down here, and it's just one click. Cool. Then you have the Zoom In, Zoom Out feature, so if you want to zoom in closer to your cells because you want to get really close and familiar and personable, or you want to zoom out to see more of the spreadsheet, well, there you go, click and drag. 